The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you all things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything the Father has is mine. For this reason, I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We begin by Googling one word, vision. Vision, the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. A vision is a mental image of a possible and desirable destination for the organization. We can say that a vision is a dream, a distant, long-term dream. The Catholic faith is based on a vision of the origin, structure, purpose, and goal of creation, of the human person, of human society. It takes most of our lives to experience that the vision is true. The dogma of the Trinity declares that the one God is Father, Son, and Spirit, a tri-unity. The only difference between the divine persons is their eternal, total, reciprocal, and generative relationship. The only difference is in the relationship. The core of reality is spontaneous delight, harmonious love that is interdependent. It at once unites and differentiates. It knows nothing of domination. It does not impose uniformity. There is no exclusion. This superabundant love continually overflows, brooding over, giving birth to, and sustaining the universe, particle and wave, energy and matter. At the subatomic level, the material world, like the Trinity, is one substance that takes ever more complex forms based on spatial relationships in the atoms and the distribution of energy. That self-gift continues to labor with, in, for the whole creation. We are called to be stewards of creation, to tend it, preserve it, share it, to build a sustainable world where all can thrive. Is there a place for commerce, for corporations, for structured ways to produce foods, goods, and energy? Of course, and necessarily. But raw profit for investors, regardless of the consequences for others and for the future of the planet, is literally a crime against humanity and a crime against the Creator. From the Big Bang until now, the goal is the creation of persons, individual beings, who become fully themselves by being united with one another and by giving themselves to the love that moves the stars. We have been told all of our lives that there is one perfect standard, form created by God. Any deviation from that form is not from God and is defective. All must be done to mitigate and, if possible, correct these defects. Failing that, the defective 
must be given no accommodation or approval and be denied recognition and legitimacy. This is a lie and a dangerous one. As Father Rohr wrote in The Delight of Diversity, even in the eternal nature of things, somehow your you, in your Eunice, on the path that God is leading you on, the journey you are going through, the burdens that you are bearing. In the eternal scheme of things, you discover that all God wants from you is you. This is the liberating secret. I am precisely the gift God wants. All I can give back to God is who I really and fully am. That is all God wants. Do you see why we've been praying the sushi pay at each Mass? The divine persons give to one another who they really are, all that they really are. You and I, we, are called to receive, enjoy, and struggle to share the generative, compassionate life of the Trinity. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, my entire will, all that I have and call my own. You have given it all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. That's what goes on in the Trinity. That's what should be going on in our hearts and in our community. Deep within, there is a particle of the divine that makes me, me, you, you. Between and among us, there is the wave of the divine that makes us and us. The church, our whole society, is meant to be a sacrament of the Trinity. How we live together in family, parish, and society either mediates that communal life of God that God calls us to share or denies it. Those who worship money and are obsessed with power shamelessly foment fear, disunity, grievance, exclusion, and enmity. They are idolaters. And those who are silent about this are complicit in the idolatry. We must not be silent. We must not be complicit. We must live our vision. We come from, we are going to, a source of joy, a strength, a patience, a radiance we can barely articulate. This is how we came to be. This is why we are alive. Whatever the challenges and sufferings we face, this is our destiny. A vision is the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. A vision is a mental image of a possible and desirable destination for the organization. We can say that a vision is a dream a distant, long-term dream. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Santo, si coterat in principio et nunc et semper, et in secula secula,